Um, welcome everyone to Self Day Saturdays, Self Care Saturdays. Um, I have just been kicked off a live feed. I was um, a few minutes in, so it, then I got a message saying that it hadn't actually gone live. So if there's a duplicate of a few minute video, um, bear with me. Um, so apologies for that. What I'll do is I'll just do a recap in case um, my live hadn't actually gone out and then we will carry on with this topic. So yeah, to recap of what I've just mentioned, um, I really wanted to explore self-care because there's such a trend right now around health and well-being and how we really need to engage in that regular self-care to support our well-being and health. And what I generally find is um, people's understanding of why we need to engage in self-care is sometimes lacking. Um, we we see all those, those captions of, oh, self-care is really important, make sure you engage in self-care, but there's often not an explanation of why we need to engage in self-care. The other part I wanted to cover was um, really reflecting on the types of self-care that we can engage in um, because there's so many different varieties of self-care and from my perspective it's really helpful to get that balance across the self-care um, genres I guess, categories. Um, so really really useful to have open conversations around this um so yeah put in the comments any um reflections around self-care what kind of self-care you usually like to do if you do engage in self-care um so for example do you enjoy going out for walks do you enjoy seeing your friends um so put in the comments what your favorite self-care activity is always like to hear um people's different perspectives and also looking for new ideas for myself and my clients um so within um this specific topic I wanted to cover that two categories of why we need to engage in self-care and how. So I'll focus on why first because and I would include myself in this I have found having spoken to so many women that people generally don't engage in regular self-care because there's that for yourself. So put number one in the comments if that's something that you have felt before, if that's a regular thought that um, that occurs to you. Because what we find is we need that um, justification of why we need to engage in self-care. Um, and what I often hear is I felt so guilty when I stopped um, and, and watch that program on TV because I should have been doing blank, fill in the blank. So I should have been doing my housework. I should have been doing um, that work um, task that I wasn't able to get done during the day. I should have been studying. I should have um, met my friends um, that I wasn't able to because I had to work late. Um, so I hear this all the time and this is something I'm very much still working on. I think having a job and a business um, is definitely you need discipline to engage in that self-care because quite often I'm sitting watching um, Keeping Up With The Kardashians and I'm thinking, oh gosh, I, I really should be sitting and working on my business. But to allow myself to continue working on my business, I have to engage in that self-care. So it's really important to integrate self-care into our lives, into our schedules, and really understand what it does, how it serves us, and why it's so important. So what I often do um, when I'm speaking to other women that I'm coaching is to work on that justification. So really reflecting on all of the reasons why you need to engage in self-care. A huge topic I often harp on about is unpaid labor. Unpaid labor. <laughs> labor. Unpaid labor. Now, if anyone has heard of unpaid labor, it's such an interesting topic and men engage in a lot of um, unpaid labour but especially women. So 
from my experience, um, it can range from 10 hours a week to 40 hours a week plus. So unpaid labour is the work that we do that we don't get paid for. So this isn't necessarily like volunteering jobs or anything like that, um, that probably would fall under it. But what I'm talking about within unpaid labour is looking after your children, being a full-time mum, doing your housework, looking after other people, um, if you have a family, cooking and cleaning for them, um, what else, going grocery shopping, doing all of those necessary tasks that take up so much of our free time. And it's so important to really focus on how much that affects us. Now, what I would really like you to do is just take note over the next couple of days how much unpaid labour you engage in. Um, And then add those hours to your working um, hours as well. And you will be so friggin surprised (laughs) because the chances are if you work, say, full-time hours, so say 40 hours a week, um, if you don't take breaks um, within that, that could go to 45 hours easily. Then... um, you know, doing your housework, looking after your children, your family, um, doing some caring roles. So for example, dropping off shopping to elderly relatives, um, all of those kind of bits. Um, You will be blown away by how many hours we actually do work. Um, And it can be as good as double, like we can do 80 to 100 hours a week off work. Now that is wild, that's so, such a high number of labour that we're engaging in, most of which will probably be unpaid. So that is a huge number one justification of why you need that self-care. The second one is mental health. Stress, burnout, um, vicarious trauma, um, I might do a Uh, training on vicarious trauma because that is a really interesting topic and so it's it's basically um secondary trauma so if you perhaps um work in social care um you will have experienced trauma through your work because of what you're seeing what you're hearing um so yeah so burnout stress um vicarious trauma are all really easy things to obtain when you're not taking regular breaks. I have been burnt out so many times um, whilst working in social care. I have been so stressed. I have been off work because of really poor mental health because I have not um, either had the opportunity to engage in self-care because my work-life balance is so shit or because I've maybe not been as disciplined um, and felt guilty for not picking up those extra hours, not picking up that extra shifts or that that on call. So really reflecting on the impact that can really have on us um, as as human beings um, and really why it is so important to engage in that self-care. The third one is all about that self-development and self-reflection and self-awareness, all of the good selves. Um, So what you find is when you're not engaging in regular self-care, you're not actually able to recognise what's going on for you. So your self-awareness is very much poor because you're not tuned in to what's happening with yourself. Your self-reflection around working out where your mental health is, isn't very much being readily used because you're just going and going and going and going and not engaging in those meaningful activities. A really explicit example that I can share around how the dangers of this can happen is um, a couple of years ago I was I was working three different jobs um, different stress levels and different capacities um, and I was so burnt out and um, I, I literally was working so many hours a week I wasn't stopping to engage in self-care and then um, 
I, I went out drinking one night uh, with, with my sister and a couple friends and um, when I woke up I felt just like a bit crap um, which is very natural after a night out sometimes. <laughs> um, but the next three days I felt really ill, I felt in so much pain um, it got to the point where I had to phone in sick for work, I was vomiting and I was actually lying on the couch um, on one of those three days, on the latter part and I kept like falling asleep um, because I just felt so shit. Um, mother's intuition, my mother, my mum, um, kept phoning me um, being like something is wrong, you keep falling asleep like in effect you know I don't nap often so I was, I was passing out with the pain so she kept phoning and was like you need to phone NHS 24 which um for those who aren't um within the UK that is our national health service emergency he helpline out with ours so I eventually phoned them explained my symptoms I very much knew and I'm saying I knew that it was just because I was burnt out and um, I felt stressed I was so used to feeling like crap this wasn't really far away from my norm the pain um, was a lot higher but generally I was so used to feeling like crap I just felt it was another episode of burnout and I would recover um, Lo and behold, I got told to pack a hospital bag, come up um, to the hospital. When I went into reception, I had to get a taxi because I couldn't drive. When I went into reception, I gave my name and the doctor was waiting at the door. They walked me to um, this special unit. They um, sort of did a, a very quick assessment and um, within hours I was having my appendix removed. Um, I had to then remain in hospital for several days after because I had left myself in that state of pain um, really, really dangerously ill for such a long time, three days. Um, they thought it had possibly ruptured and I was at risk of sepsis which you, you you die from if it's if it's left untreated um so that is a really really key example of how important it is to listen to your body and how feeling uncomfortable and feeling in pain and feeling unhappy and feeling unwell should never become your norm and because it became my norm I literally almost died had it not been for my mum's um, motherly intuition so thank you mum <laughs> so yeah that's a really really huge example of how um, how important it is to really engage in that self-care because it helps us to remain in tune with who we are as people so now that we've recognised why we need to engage in self-care, it's really important to engage in, uh, to discuss what self-care looks like and how we can engage in it. So within the self-care structure, I usually break down my self-care into five different categories. The first one is physical. Um, so that could be anything. So that could be going to yoga, going to the gym, going out for walks. Um, it could be stretching every morning. Um, it could be doing housework. Housework gets our calories totally zapped, which is great. Um, it could be swimming. Um, it could be a number of different things, dancing. Um, but just moving and being active. So that is the first self-care that's really important for us to engage in um, and there's so much research out there around why it's important to move. Um, some of which I cover in my three ways to elevate your life and also my five ways to engage in self-care and to stick to it. So make sure you check out those trainings on the Light Up Your Inner Power guide, Facebook, gu Facebook group guide. So I'll um, pop the links to the comments um, in the comments. Where am I going with this? 
I will drop the links in the comments below for those specific trainings because they um, go into it a little bit more in depth. The second one is social. We as humans were created to be in a pact. So really reflecting on how we can truly um, connect with people. So what does that look like? Is that arranging to spend a bit more time with your family? Is that to um, spend time with your friends more regularly? Is it to make a point and take a lunch break so you can sit and speak to your colleagues? Um, is it to FaceTime people that you don't live near and you rarely speak to? Um, is it making a commitment to yourself of once a week to speak to someone that's really important and meaningful to you? So really reflecting on how you can build up that social um, self-care within your life because it can really help us as, um, as women to to increase those self-care aspects those positivity when we spend time with other people um in terms of the third one that's mental health now mental health is a really interesting one it's very specialized and specific to the individual in my opinion so really just taking a moment to reflect on what supports your mental health so for me it's going to the gym so tying in that physical um social care not social care what is wrong with me today self-care um, to support my mental health I have to talk to people I have to talk to my girls I have to talk to my family I have to talk to my boyfriend about what's going on with me if not I like explode um in terms of mental health I need to take some time out I need to engage in low level activities as well so sitting reading a book um watching tv listening to podcasts so really reflecting on what you can do to support your mental health um, in terms of self-care um, and yeah it looks very different to everyone so pop in the comments if you have any suggestions around what supports your mental health and um, in respect of self-care have you got any tips and tricks for the rest of us please pop it down because it's so helpful to have these open conversations and um, especially around mental health because really passionate around um, reducing that kind of that what's the word taboo um around um mental health so yes pop a note in the comments below another one um is emotion so emotional self-care is quite closely linked to mental health so it focuses on our emotions and how we're actually feeling so um, this again can be quite specialised, it can be very specific and unique to each individual but journaling is such a key one to really engaging in that emotional self-care. For me sometimes um, it's yeah sometimes it's just sitting and feeling your feels so sitting and acknowledging okay today I feel really low so what's going on with that and exploring that a little bit more really giving yourself that time to self-reflect around what's going on for you just now so for me um to support my emotional health is generally reading connecting with like-minded women um so i can kind of discuss the intricacies of what's going on with myself or their selves um, watching programs and um, listening to podcasts and um, that's all very much um, education based based on sort of psychological aspects very life coachy that really helps me to support my emotional well-being because I need to understand what's going on 
in order to, to find a solution um, for what's going on with me right now. So that's a key one of how I um, really support myself. Um, I'm a trained social worker, so I'm very theory based, so I need to understand what's going on. I need to make sense of what's going on with myself in order to promote that healing process and moving forward through that transition. So emotional self-care is really, really key and it's definitely one that a lot of us miss out. Um, so that's physical, social, um, mental and emotional. So the last one is spiritual. So spiritual uh, spirituality is a really huge part of my identity. Um, initially, it wasn't something I very much shared with people. Um, I'm a lot more forthcoming about it now because it's such um, inter is so intertwined with my life coaching style, with my programs, my frameworks. So inevitably, it's something I am more open to sharing now. So within spirituality, this once again, it can look very different for lots of different people. For me, it is tuning into my spiritual guide. So really listening out to any messages, any guidance that comes through um, for me, any support I need. Um, I use crystals, I use angel cards, I use moonology cards, I um, pray, I meditate, I do so much stuff spiritual healing so much stuff to really um engage in that spiritual self-care to really ensure that i'm working towards that path of enlightenment because spirituality is such a key part of that they can really help to uplift our energy they can really help us to develop our understanding of our path and of our purpose so tuning into that can be really really powerful but more on that tomorrow because tomorrow is the final day um, of a week with Happy Luya. Um, put a number one in the comments if you have enjoyed these videos um, because it will give me more inspo to do more on this wider platform. Again, if you would like to jump into my uh, Light Up Your Inner Power Facebook group, as always, I'll pop that in the link below, as well as connecting with me. So my Clarity Call booking um, link will be also available too. Tomorrow, we are going to be focusing on spirituality. So whether this is your type of thing or not, I would really encourage you to engage um, in the last session because it is such a cool subject. Um, it's very different for lots of different people around your interpretation of what spirituality is, what energy means, um, how that feels for other people. So we're really going to have a really open conversation around spirituality. I'm going to be talking about lots of different tools and um, sort of practices that I would recommend um, in terms of really enhancing that spirituality within your own life. So yes, definitely check it out. It's going to be a really great uh, Sunday session. Um, but yes, thank you so much for tuning in and as always, sending so much love and light to you all. Have an amazing Saturday and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.